Hi there, this is Troy from Nightwish and you are watching the Impact Channel. Welcome to Hungary, nice to meet you. Nice to be here. The new Nightwish record was inspired by Charles Darwin's book uh, called On the Origin of Species by the quote, and as forms most beautiful. What did you want to refer to when you composed the songs? Uh, well, it's, it's a bit more than just the uh, origin of species. It's inspired by lots of different um, works, uh, but all of them sci uh, in, involved in the sciences. So um, there's uh, the books by Richard Dawkins, including the book Great Show on Earth, which we used the title of that for our, uh, the big extended piece that finishes the album. But we, we were also uh, inspired by the books of um, Carl Sagan, the, uh, uh, the astronomer and physicist, um, various of the book, uh, scientific books. Um, so it, it, it wasn't just um, evolutionary biology that we were inspired by, it was the sciences in general. I see. Yeah. And the operatic and symphonic influences are not that much in the front like before. Well, why is that? Uh, well, I think they are. I mean, they, they, like the Greatest Show on Earth is very, is very um, symphonic. I know what you, I understand what you mean about operatic. It's much less operatic, but then Imaginarium was less operatic too. Mm -hmm. there, was, there was no, um, there was none of that there. Um, but the music is still, uh, it's still got all the um, the flavors, the hallmark of Nightwish in its in its uh, in its width. And it's, uh, I don't, I, I've never used the word the bombastic because it isn't really, not for me. <laughs> but it's, it's big music, it's big music, and it's still, it's still identifiably Nightwish, I think. All right, let's talk about you a little bit. When did you become a music fan, and who inspired you the most back in the day? My dad, and uh, my dad had a band, and uh, there was a guitarist in his band called Vince White. He was a huge influence on me, mm. but my dad's record collection was was expansive. Uh, it contained everything from country music through progressive rock, uh, uh, folk music, classical music. So um, from an early age, I wanted to be a musician like my dad, mm. uh, even though he wasn't a professional. But he, he was he was a big influence on me. And uh, and then when I uh, I got to school, I was a terrible student because I was always hiding away from doing sports by um, playing guitar, hiding in a back room playing guitar rather than playing football, uh, which I still totally uh, uh, believe I'm still, I am still like that, you know, but, but uh, yeah, I was, I was consumed by music, um, devoted to it from an early age, couldn't do anything else, so here I am. <laughs> we are glad you're here. <laughs> <laughs> it's splendid to be here on <clears throat> Budapest, what a city. Beautiful. And who inspires you nowadays? Um, nowadays, uh, I do tend to look backwards in my musical tastes, which is not a healthy thing. Uh, but I think it's because for me, um, there's a drought. There's been a drought for a long, long time of really inspirational music for me personally. However, I do um, discover great new things. And uh, I've discovered some fantastic bands. Um, since Join a Nightwish, like Amorphis, I really, really love Amorphis, Delane, some of these bands are fantastic. But I love, um, I love stuff like Sigur Ross as well, and uh, atmospheric music like that. But I, I do tend to uh, listen back to the old back catalogue of Pink Floyd and mm -hmm. all that stuff, Jethro Tull and Yes, <coughs> and all that prog rock. <laughs> <laughs> and what was the first instrument you learned to play? Uh, it was the guitar. Uh, I was about 11 or 12. I started to play guitar. Uh, again, my dad played really simple, basic guitar. And uh, he, he showed me a few chords, but then after that, I just exploded. I couldn't, you know, wherever I was, I, I had a guitar mm -hmm. with me. And uh, so I was guitarist first. Then at the age of, um, I'd say about 16, uh, I, got, I got a whistle. Mm -hmm. I started playing whistle, but I'd always wanted to play the pipes uh, from an early age, from, yeah. Eight, nine, or ten, uh, and I got my first set of pipes when I was eighteen. 
Now, people know you as a multi-instrumentalist. Mm. If you had a chance to pick a new instrument, what would it be? It would be the tuba. All right. Uh, just because it's huge and it makes a really funny sound. Mm -hmm. And uh, one of my all-time heroes, Stan Laurel, uh, played a tuba in a film called Swiss Miss. Mm -hmm. And I can only aspire to that greatness. How about the cherry, though? The what? It's an Austrian uh, instrument. It has a really uh, low vibe. Like, sounds whoa, good. Whoa, whoa, whoa. That sounds very good. Oh, you'll have to you'll have to write that down for me. I will definitely. Right. I, I have the same actually at home. The jersey, yeah. It sounds really great. That's the kind of thing. That's the kind of thing I like to play. I'm sure, you would love that. <laughs> Wonderful. What was the first and the last record you bought? First and last. The <laughs> first record I bought I ever bought was the soundtrack for Jaws. I think mm -hmm. the film the film soundtrack. Or it might have been Dark Side of the Moon, Pink Floyd. It was around those two. Um, the last album I bought, uh, I'm in the lucky position where I, I tend to get given a lot of a, a lot of albums. You know, there's a lot of I get given loads of free CDs. Um, but the last one I bought would have been retrospective as well. It would it was probably um, the best of status quo. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Because we did a festival in, in Barcelona uh, in the summer and Stakes Quo were, were on at the festival and we all loved it. It, it was just fantastic because so I thought I must get those old songs. So that's the last CD I bought. But I mean, uh, new music, it was probably um, probably Sigur Ross, mm -hmm. their last album. What was your first concert as a fan and as a musician? That's a great question. Uh, first concert as a fan. First concert as a fan was Pink Floyd The Wall in 1980. Not bad. Yeah, <laughs> the original band, the original Pink Floyd, and that, that kind of changed my life, seeing that. I was a country, well, I was from a, an obscure part of the British Isles <laughs> where nothing much happens, and, uh, and I made the long journey down to London to see that, and I'd never seen anything like, I'd never, I'd been to a few small uh, gigs, as they say, but uh, nothing like that. So that blew my mind. Uh, it was the last, the last great concert I saw. Um, it was probably it, at festivals, I think, at, at, at festivals that we've been performing with the band. Mm -hmm. It was probably status quo. Mind you, I saw the Sweet, mm -hmm. and they were fantastic. Yeah, the Sweet on stage, one of those. But again, very, very retro. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> Takes me back to my childhood, you know, which is always nice. And the first gig as a musician? First gig as a, uh, as a musician was with my dad when I was 15 mm -hmm. in his country band. So I was playing guitar, uh, we were playing lots of Hank Williams and Eagles and all that mm -hmm. kind of country American stuff and that was, that was nerve wracking. And you have very many different artists and uh, musicians. Who is on your bucket list to work with? Um, well I've been, I've been fortunate enough to, to uh, to have fulfilled that to a degree. Some of my big heroes I've, uh, I have actually worked with, uh, which is always a tickle. It's always <laughs> a nice tickling. I guess it is, it, it, it's, it's lovely. Uh, but yeah, the, because of my, um, uh, my childhood obsession, <laughs> well, it wasn't an obsession, my childhood love of Pink Floyd, it would probably, probably be with Roger Waters or Dave Gilmore. That was my guess. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. It's fairly obvious. Your last solo record was released in 2009. Are you working on a new material at the moment? I haven't had time, unfortunately, but um, that maybe in the year off, we, we're going to have a year off in 2017. Mm -hmm. So we're going to work through to uh, October of 2016 mm -hmm. uh, on this tour. And then we've got the whole of 2017, so I'll get, get, get inspired and do something then. What does art mean to you? Art? Um, art is, uh, for me, it's, some people describe it as an, uh, an escape, uh, but to me it's not, it's, it's, without sounding pretentious, it's all around me, it's everything mm -hmm. that I see and do, I, I tend to um, uh, feel the art in, in everything, you know, walking around the streets in Budapest, I was consumed by art. And uh, music, sa the sounds of the city, the sounds of of the Christmas market is full of art to me. Mm -hmm. And uh, the the, the colour of Budapest, the the night was art. In here now, this room is art. So it's it's everything. 
really to me. It's all of life, uh, and it's 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 pretty critical as a an artist, crucial I should say, as an artist to try to express all of these things in whatever medium you have at your disposal. Do you have a favourite city in Europe? Budapest. Budapest is pretty high. Um, and I'm not just saying that. <coughs> I love Budapest. Uh, I love Paris as well. Uh, I love Helsinki. I love lots of cities. It's hard to say. I can't say a, a, a definite best because it will upset the other cities. <laughs> <laughs> you formed a Celtic rock band called You Slush in 1987. Yes. Are you interested in the Celtic culture or it was more like a musical interest? Um, that's a great question, question as well. There, it, there's a, Celtic is a, a debatable term. You know, nobody really knows who these people were. And when we talk about Celtic music, um, there's not actually no such thing. What people really mean is either Irish music or uh, music with uh, supposedly so-called traditional instruments. Uh, folk music, yeah, I've, I've always been interested in folk music. What we see as Celtic music nowadays uh, isn't really any of that. It's, uh, I, I think, you know, you, you see the likes of Enya and um, uh, Clannard and, and these big, big Irish bands and they're called Celtic. Um, then they're about as Celtic as the instruments they use, which is mainly Japanese keyboards. So Japanese keyboards are a fairly Celtic instrument <laughs> within, <laughs> within that context. But um, no, I mean, it, I don't, I, I, I don't really think I can uh, comment on, on Celticness, really, because, uh, as I say, historically, I, uh, the, I think it's a, it's a marketing label for things now, Celtic. Mm -hmm. It's something that sells um, brooches and bags and clothes and CDs, and mm -hmm. it, it hasn't any grounding in reality. But folk music, yeah, I love it. I love it. And that's, it's been a massive part of my life as well, you know, I played the pipes for a start off. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, I love it. What do you think about religions? Uh, well, I, personally I'm an atheist, uh, so that's kind of self-explanatory. Uh, I wasn't born an atheist, but uh, in, in the part of the country where I was brought up it wasn't, um, it wasn't so much of a, a big uh, deal to be atheist, mm -hmm. really. It was very secular, but um, you know, if people if people want to be religious, then you know that's mm -hmm. that's up to them. But uh, uh, I, I don't share their beliefs at all. If you could summon a historical person or a mythical creature for a chat, who would you pick and why? <laughs> that's great. Um, uh, uh, ooh. I have more coming from this. This is good stuff. A mythical or a real person? Uh, uh, a, mythical, a mythical creature? That'd be, that'd be something. Um, probably Polyphemus, the, um, the one-eyed cyclops. Mm. Yeah, I'd like to have, sit down and have a drink with him. <laughs> see, how, see how he sees the world. <laughs> I, 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 like, I like all the, uh, the classical, the classical um, Greek uh, mythological creatures. So, yeah, having dinner with the harpies would be nice. You know, going out, um, have a drink with the centaurs, that kind of thing. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and would you go for a time travel if you had a chance? Time travel. I'm perfectly happy where I am. Yeah, uh, and I am. I'm, I am a bit of a time traveller anyway. In this work, <laughs> you know, we we don't know what day it is most of the time, and uh, we're just ploughing into the future. And uh, so no, I, I wouldn't. I wouldn't be interested in going to any other period. Too dangerous. Mm -hmm. That's true. <laughs> <laughs> Do you have a favourite writer? Um, yes, uh, in probably in uh, in fiction, it would probably be either H.G. Wells or or um, Mark Twain. Mm. Uh, Non-fiction, it would be Carl Sagan uh, and Richard Dawkins probably. Do you have kids? Yeah, I've got a daughter. What are the most important values you want to pass to your child? Well, I've already passed them to her. Mm -hmm. She's uh, she's really happy. She's uh, content with what she does. She's pursuing the things that she loves, uh, which is difficult. Mm -hmm. You know, it's not an easy thing to do. 
she's she's resolved to um, uh, to not be downtrodden by any anybody or any ideas. She's she's a truly free free girl and uh, a massive success. Really, it's she's brilliant. She's brilliant. She does exactly what she wants, and and she's lovely. Okay, last few questions. Please name your five favorite albums of all the time. Yeah, <laughs> oh, that shifts, that moves around. Um, probably um, uh, uh, Tien Og, a Celtic Symphony mm -hmm. by um, Alan Stivell, who's a Breton harp player. It's a fabulous, fabulous album. The Wrecking Ball by Emily Lou Harris, who's a, an American country singer, but it's a brilliant album. Um, Wish You Were Here by Pink Floyd. Uh, what else have we got? Uh, Going for the One by Yes. Um, and finally, Planksty Words and Music. Planksty were an Irish, Irish folk band, but really brilliant. Words and Music, check it out. If somebody decided to make a tribute album for you, who would you like to hear on that? <laughs> um, doing a tribute album? Uh, well, it's, it, that would be um, my favourite uh, fictional lineup for a band, mm -hmm. which would be um, uh, Charles Darwin on drums. Uh, we'd have Claude Monet, no, J.W. Turner, the painter, he'd be on keyboards. Uh, on guitar, we would have, um, who was on guitar? Uh, probably Carl Sagan, he'd be, he'd be good on guitar. Um, on, what, what else have we got? Bass, we, we could have, on bass, we could have Gustav Mahler, mm -hmm. he'd be good on bass. And on vocals, Laurel and Hardy, definitely, those two, <laughs> on vocals. What's the meaning of life? <laughs> the meaning of life. <laughs> the meaning of life um, is, uh, it's, it's dead easy really. I don't think it needs much philosophy attached to it. It's just to be kind to each other and, uh, and pursue happiness without hurting anyone. Laugh as much as, as you possibly can. Um, and yeah, I think that's it. And survival, survival in doing all of those things is the best thing you could possibly hope for. Do you have a message to your fans? Um, yeah. What's the message to the fans? I am Sas Bogiman on Fire Bar Gat, so I knocked it off with a stian. That's my message. Thank you very much for your time. You're welcome. <laughs> that was really good.